Hey everybody, Mr. Kaczynski here. Got an important skill for you today. It's solving a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. This is in, this is in section double B of IXL's Algebra 1 skills. All right, first of all, where does the quadratic equation even come from? I'm gonna blaze through this real quick. It's not really the point of this video, but I don't wanna leave it out there where it even came from. Um, how can we take this general form of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, equals zero and get it solved for x, just get x all alone. Well, we could do completing the square, which is gonna take us a few steps. We start off, I'm gonna start off by subtracting c from both sides. Then before I can complete the square, my lead coefficient needs to be a, so I'm gonna divide everything by a. I know it's already kinda of getting ugly. Um, now we can complete the square, so I'm gonna take half of b over a and square it. So that'd be b over two a and square it which is b squared over 4a squared. So I added that to both sides. I also took this negative c over a, and I, I multiplied it by 4a, um, so I can get a common denominator on the bottom, because I'm gonna combine those two fractions. So that's what I did on the right. I combined these two fractions to b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. On the left, I took this perfect square trinomial that I created, and I factored it. Uh, then I took the square root of both sides, all right, so on the right, uh, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, I just left it as an irrational. And on the bottom, the square root of 4a squared is 2a. And then I subtract uh, b over 2a from both sides. And you get this, the quadratic formula, the quadratic formula. All right, so negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You're going to hear me say it a few times uh, every time we use it, okay? So we can use this formula to find x every single time that we've got an equation in that form where this is a and this is b and this is c. So let's do it a few times. I'll try not to keep you too long. But I highly suggest you stick with me to the end because so, I've got some uh, little things i got to throw at you. Okay, so here we've got a is 6, b is 5, c is 1. Here we go. So s is our variable in this case equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. All right. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now let's get to simplifying before we reach for our calculator, okay? Maybe we won't even need our calculator. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 24 all over 12. All right, uh, which is negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 12, which is negative 5 plus or minus just 1 over 12 which is negative five plus one would be uh, negative four over 12, and negative five minus one would be negative six over 12. Those can obviously be simplified to negative one third and negative one half. So those are our solutions using the quadratic formula. Um, we could have used completing the square, we could have used factoring in this one, uh, but that's the quadratic formula. You're going to see it gets pretty repetitive. Um, let's do it again. That one turned out rational as well. All right, here we've got a is 2, b is 8, c is negative 7. Here we go. k equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Okay, so it's negative 8 plus or minus the square root. Um, eight, 8 squared is 64. And negative 4 times 2 times negative 7 is 60, I'm sorry, 56, positive 56, all over 4. Okay, that equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 120 over 4. 
And this is going to be irrational because we don't have a perfect square in there, which also means it was never factorable from beginning. So I'm going to punch this into my calculator uh, at this point. When you're doing that too, uh, you really have to put the numerator in parentheses. You might even have to put this negative or this 120 in parentheses when you do this. So be careful. Um, but the answer comes out to uh, negative 8 plus the square root of 120 over 4 is 0.74 and negative 8 minus the square root of 120 divided by 4 is negative 4.74. So those are the two answers that IXL wants. It wants either um, simplified improper fractions or it wants decimals run to the nearest hundredth. Okay. Um, what about this one? All right, we got A is 6, B is negative 4, C is negative 3. D equals negative B. You know what? Let's let's take a little shortcut here. Um, let's. What's the opposite of negative 4? It's 4. All right, so there's negative B, plus or minus. B squared, negative 4 times negative 4, that's 16. Uh, negative 4AC, minus 4 times A times C. Well, a times c, six times three is, or six times negative three is negative eighteen. And when you multiply by negative four, you get seventy-two. So there's negative four times a times c all over two times a. Two times six is twelve. See, so you can do some of this mental math kind of in your head. So you get four plus or minus the square root of eighty-eight over twelve. And at this point, we can go ahead and reach for our calculator. Um, to get our answer. This is the irrational answer. It can be simplified a little bit if we wanted to leave it as a fraction. Uh, I'm not going to get into that in this particular video. We'll wait until we're simplifying radicals. So 4 plus the square root of 88 divided by 12 is 1.12 and 4 minus the square root of 88 divided by 12 is negative 0.45. You should try punching that into your calculator and make sure you get those numbers. Okay, two more. This one uh, is interesting because it's not in general form yet. The first thing we need to do is add 9 to both sides of this. And then we can see that uh, A is 1, B is 6, and C is 9. All right, so here we go. P equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared. 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times A times C. Um, a times C, 1 times 9 would be 9, uh, times 4 would be 36, check that out, that's interesting. All over 2 times A, 2 times 1 is 2. So we get negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2. Square root of 0 is 0, so negative 6 plus or minus 0 over 2. Whether you add or subtract uh, 0 to negative 6, you get negative 6. And negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So this just has the one answer. Just has one solution, not 2. So interesting. So when the square root, when that b squared minus 4ac equals 0, we just get one answer. Remember that. And one more. To be honest, I would not uh, even use the quadratic formula to solve this, but we're going to. a is 9, b is 0, and c is negative 5, okay? So we're going to do r equals uh, negative b, negative 0 is 0, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 0 squared is 0, minus 4 times a times c, 9 times negative 5, that's negative 5, um, or negative 45, times negative 4 would be positive 180, all over 2 times a, 2 times 9 is 18. So, I mean, what do we really have here? We have the square root of 180 over 18. All right. The square root of 100, or it's actually, I'm sorry, plus or minus the square root of 180 over 18. So the square root of 180 divided by 18 is 0.75. And the... Uh, negative the square root of 180 divided by 18 is negative 
But I'm going to be honest, I would have just used square roots to solve this, even though the directions even say, you know, use um, the quadratic formula. I would have just added 5 to both sides and then divided both sides by 9 and then taken the square root of both sides. And this right here equals this. They're the same, so it doesn't matter. All right, there's the quadratic formula. I raced through it. I'll put my favorite quadratic formula song in the uh, description of the video, uh, and you can link to that and sing along. 